One minute it's super hot. Next minute it's freezing cold. Next thing you know it's raining cats and dogs. And that's Texas weather. So why would you move here or not move here because of the weather? We'll get into it. Hey folks, Todd Tremonti here. And we get questions all the time about moving to the Dallas-Fort Worth area and on the different you know, aspects of what life here is like. And the weather comes up a lot. So we wanted to put a quick video together for so many of you that have asked questions and commented, some of them really funny by the way, about the weather in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. So if you're not super familiar with Texas and our geography, North Texas is basically where Dallas and Fort Worth are. Now, Fort Worth is uh, to the west of Dallas and is sort of the beginning kind of gateway of moving out to the west and west Texas. But we are in the nor you know, definite northern part of the state, kind of north central. Um, and so there is a very different climate here than there is, say, in Houston, which is on the, you know, very near the coast in kind of southeast Texas. Um, or far, far, far south Texas, which borders Mexico. And then you've got the panhandle of Texas, which you know gets very, very near the Rocky Mountains. And then you've got El Paso to the extreme west, where you're in another time zone. And you've got more of a climate of uh, northern Mexico or, or New Mexico. So there's a lot going on. But Dallas-Fort Worth uh, typically observes um, one really, really large summer season. Um, a, a pretty typical winter season as far as length. I mean, we get a, a virtually a three month kind of winter season. It's not as extreme. And then we get two slightly shorter, uh, really enjoyable seasons in fall and spring. Um, we'll go into a little bit of detail kind of about what's normal and what's not normal. I think there's a lot of fear when it comes to the Dallas-Fort Worth area about tornadoes, because if you live in another part of the country, and you see us on the news for our weather, it's probably because something really bad happened and tornadoes are about the worst thing we've got going on. They are pretty rare, but once or twice a year we'll get a scare and every few years we'll, we'll have a tornado touchdown and they're absolutely devastating. We've been very fortunate for the last several years to have uh, almost no loss of life due to tornadoes, but sadly a few years back we did have a really major tornado and um, there were there were a few people that lost their life. But property damage is a big deal. Obviously residential and commercial, sometimes even roads and bridges and things like that. But tornadoes are super scary and they're obviously a big, big deal. They are pretty rare though. What's actually much more common as far as somewhat scary weather here is high wind and rain and hail. So in springtime, we pretty much know here in North Texas that that's kind of hail season. You want to be careful and have the ability to park your car underneath something or in the garage, that type of thing, uh, because we could get hail all the way down to little bitty pea size. Um, and until I lived in North Texas, I didn't believe it was possible, but we have seen larger than softball size hail. Um, I have had real estate clients who have had hail bigger than a softball come through the roof, through composition shingles, through plywood, through sheetrock and into the home. And trust me, that is scary and, and, and obviously pretty devastating to your property uh, and, and repairs are significant. So that's actually the more frequent issue. Now, hail of that size, I've only ever seen once in my life. But hail that's in that kind of dime to quarter size, you know, happens here once or more pretty much every single year. Uh, there will be damage to vehicles, fences, gutters, siding, certainly shingles and roofing materials. You know, it's pretty rare here to have solar panels, but it's becoming more common and there's definitely damage to those skylights, things like that when it comes to hail. So that's probably the most common destructive weather that we have. Now we do get some high winds and that's obviously what leads to tornadoes, but high winds and rain uh, can lead to some, I, I say minimal because most things are built to sustain them, but fences and shingles and uh, um, things like that, that where, where wind can be a problem. Um, so those are some things that you may not be super excited about in North Texas. Some of the things you might actually look forward to, um, we have fairly typical weather patterns around precipitation and rain. Um, I've lived through a little bit of a drought season here where we just didn't get quite enough rain to have full ponds and lakes. And uh, there's been some threat to kind of the municipal water supply. Uh, but typically we'll, we'll bounce back and have a, a pretty wet season for three or four years and we'll recover our water supplies. And that's here in the last decade, we, we went through a, a, a somewhat extended drought period followed by a, a couple of really, really wet years. And we're kind of back in relative balance now. 
Um, those things do happen. Obviously, we have pretty extreme heat in the summer months, and so uh, without adequate rain, you'll see dead grass and you'll see uh, trees and, and, and certain vegetation struggle. And uh, recreational lakes, some of our recreational lakes are also water supply lakes where, where water has been low enough that people weren't able to get boats out of boat launches and things like that. So, you know, every, every region deals with kind of their ups and downs. We do have some swings with, um, uh, you know, drought and precipitation. Water supply is becoming a little bit of a bigger concern and for some people a much bigger concern in North Texas because population has boomed so much. So, you know, we keep our eye on precipitation because that water uh, provides our drinking water, provides our municipal water. And so um, there's actually new lakes being built as we speak northeast of Dallas right now and some others considered around the Metroplex to be able to retain and hold more water for uh, city uses. So, you know, that's a lot of information on rain and drought and water. But if you're thinking about a move to the area, it's important to know that. Um, we, uh, we don't get a lot of, of heavy, heavy, you know, snow in winter, but one of the things that the rest of the country often laughs at us for is, again, when you see us on the news, you see our schools and city buses and things shutting down because we got what to you looks like a relatively minimal winter storm. The difference in what you have to think about is those are still rare enough that most of our cities and our states, uh, our state, um, don't have the you know plow equipment, trucks that run salt and things like that. So it's actually more economically feasible simply to shut things down for a day or two than to you know you know retain a fleet of machinery that we're only going to use every couple two or three years. So that's kind of one of the unique aspects of our area and our climate. The other thing people don't really consider here uh, about us here from other parts of the country is even in the winter when we do get those storms, Things will freeze, then they'll thaw during the day, then they'll refreeze. That's actually an extraordinarily dangerous road situation. So you might get a little snow and it's on top of a very thick, dangerous sheet of ice. And the fact is true. People in North Texas aren't as skilled in driving in snow and ice. So sometimes it's safer and more cost effective simply to say, shut everything down for two or three days than it would be to you know try to manage that in a more traditional way that someone from the north or northeast or whatever might be more accustomed to. So, you know, maybe that's a little defense of our Texas ways. Maybe that's a little bit of education on why we do things the way we do. Um, so th there's a lot of criticism, uh, again, from if you're watching us on the news uh, about winter stuff, and then the tornadoes are kind of the next big thing you probably hear from us on the national level. Once in a while, we do get kind of the flooding issues that come with hurricanes, that come from the coast uh, through the Gulf Coast, whether that be you know New Orleans, the Louisiana side, or Houston or Corpus Christi uh, on the Texas side. We're far enough north that we typically don't get the worst of those storms, but we do often get kind of the, the, the tail side of that with heavy, heavy rains. And we've, ha we've had some flooding issues. Not a lot, not super typical, but that's one of the other things if you're just thinking about the big bad stuff that can happen that does come with being in Texas. But most of all, uh, you know, the, the negative of the, the super hot summer is midday heat is, you know, you want to stay in the car, you want to run the air conditioning, be in the office, be in the house. One of the benefits, though, are long, enjoyable summer nights where you've got temperature in the 80s, sometimes still in the 90s, but you're swimming, you're going for walks, you're playing outside with the family and the kids. There's all sorts of, you know, outside events that can be enjoyable, you know, well into the night. And so some of those super, super fun uh, things you probably heard in a country song or seen in a movie about uh, playing in the creek or the river or the pond or for a lot of us swimming pools and things like that. Uh, summers in Texas are pretty great in that regard. Uh, so, uh, you know, our sports teams typically have to have dome stadiums and a lot of them have built them. And, and right here in Dallas, our, our baseball team, the Rangers, has actually rebuilt a stadium from what was a perfectly good stadium just because it gets so hot in summertime, uh, attendance was low. So there are some caveats to that, but some of the benefits are, you know, nine o'clock summer evening, really having an enjoyable walk, you know, in the garden, in the backyard, through the neighborhood, you know, whatever that looks like on a trail or something like that. So there's pros and cons to all of these things. But if you're thinking about making a move to the Dallas-Fort Worth area, those are some of the really big things you may want to focus on. There's tons and tons and tons of little things. 
that you might have questions or comments about. We would love to respond to those. Feel free to drop those in the comment box below. We can deal with them there, or maybe we'll make another spinoff video from that. Now, if you haven't seen a lot of our other videos, uh, we've done some videos on why to move to Texas, why not to move to Texas, some of the differences in Dallas and Fort Worth, um, reasons to rel relocate to some of the smaller communities within Dallas and Fort Worth, some of the smaller towns or cities that make up this really big area we call Dallas-Fort Worth, which when combined together, Dallas, Fort Worth, Arlington, McKinney, and Frisco is one of the biggest you know, metropolitan areas in the world. When you separate those cities, Dallas and Fort Worth are both some of the biggest cities in the state of Texas and the biggest cities in the country. So it's a big, big, big area. So when you think about Dallas, Fort Worth, if you're from outside of the state of Texas, you may or may not know how big of an area you really are referring to. Hundreds of square miles, and you know, a couple hours in the car, depending on which way you're going and to what end of, of the Metroplex, as we call it, you're headed to. So, I mean, there are even some variances in weather there, you know? So those are some things to think about. Uh, Dallas-Fort Worth Airport, DFW Airport, is kind of dead center slightly to the west in between Dallas and Fort Worth. Um, there's not a whole lot that shuts down the DFW Airport once in a while, there'll be some flight delays due to heavy winds. And then the winter time, the ice that I was talking about can be an issue. But uh, typically, uh, we have uh, minimal delays as far as travel compared to, again, other parts of the country that deal with all sorts of other things, fires and winds and earthquakes and you know blizzards and things like that. So hopefully, you you found some real positives in there. We wanted to kind of lay it all out and talk about some of the things that are scary. But it's a wonderful place to live. You know, 80, 90% of the time, uh, the climate is really, really enjoyable. I would say the parts that are hardest for most of us that live here are the occasional stretch in the summer where you've got 100 plus degree days for sometimes two and three weeks straight. But those are a smaller chunk. Even early summer and, and late, late, late summer and moving into fall uh, are, are manageable because you get those mornings and evenings that are really, really great. And, you know, most of us are out and about in, in school or, or uh, the office or whatever midday for, for the, the worst of it. So hopefully you found something that you like and you think about making a move to our area. If so, we'd love to help you make that move, earn your business, and really uh, share our expertise with you far beyond just the weather. So comment below, like this video if it's been helpful, share it with anybody you think it would help. We would love to be your real estate professionals of choice when you make a move to or within the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And we will talk to you on the next one. Take care.